Good evening everyone, today is gonna be a new video about the, well, characters from set 2. The set 2 is a completely different, um, let's say, pair of scissors. And you need to be prepared of what to play and how to play it. And I would like to show you my personal opinion on synergies and champions. So this tier list takes into account both raw power of every champion and their potential synergies. So let's just dive in and I'll explain what is what is what. First of all, first of all, Poison tier is the strongest in my opinion because those creatures create a synergy that just wrecks people. It, it feels like something that you cannot counter. Uh, it feels that you cannot even play a single ultimate when you're being affected by Poison. And it's a really big thing. It's a counter to so many builds, mages, to summoners, but basically to everything. Even Berserkers have a problem with Poison because they rely on Olaf getting off of the ultimate. So in general, all of those creatures, apart from Singed, are definitely not above everyone else. But together, they create a synergy that is insane. And, is, and it can go online as early as level 6. When you can go for Kog'Maw, Mundo and Twitch. Well, sometimes even level 5 if you're super lucky. And you get an early Twitch. But in general, think about this composition. Uh, about, about Poison. As an end game splash addition to your composition. Because you probably want to have Singed. And you will not get reliably get Singed before level, let's say, 8. You can get it on 7, but it's it requires a little bit of luck. But most of the time you're going to get it on 8. And this is the moment when you're going to splash, when you're going to pivot from something to Poison to make your composition super OP. So Poison in general feels like it's way too powerful. And in my opinion, if you can play it, you should. And that applies to almost every single composition. You can splash it with Shadow. You can splash it with Berserkers. You can splash it with uh, Summoners. You can splash it with, with Druids. With whatever. It's it's actually insanely powerful. Now, when it comes to uh, Kog'Maw, he's a placeholder until you get cinched. But he is here because sometimes... On, in a top late game, um, top late game uh, build, you will add another poison character just to have another poison character. So sometimes you play double Twitch or double Mundo or double Singed just because you can. All right, now when it comes to tier S, so very playable creatures that are capable of carrying the entire game. They can be your late game carries, they can be your early game carries, they can be your mid game carries. They are basically all over the place. They are overstated, and they have insane synergies. Let's start with Diane because she's not so obvious. Diane is a tier 1 character that has insane stats. She's an assassin, of course, additionally, which is great because you already have Kha'Zix, who is also in tier S, and you can make someone else an assassin to play uh, a triple assassin um, uh, composition. So, an example, Olaf can be also an assassin. But when it comes to Di D Diane... Her, her ultimate, which is the shields and in damage, it's just stacked so fast. You can build her with however way you, you would like to. But she's insane as a mage. She's insane as a healer as well. So an example, Rabadon and Gunblade is insane. She's very good with... with um, What's his name? With Warmog. And in general, anything that just boosts AP. She can also be just good with only defensive items and mana generation. And she feels like completely obnoxious tier 1 unit. So I'm going to say that most likely she's going to get a nerf in 923. And when it comes to Kha'Zix, he's raw statted. He's powerful without any, it without any items. Um, he has insane mobility. He basically goes from edge of the map to edge of the map with each ultimate. He only requires 40 mana. So if you have two Seraphs on him, he basically auto-attacks once, casts an ultimate, deals a critical with physical damage, auto-attacks once, deals a critical with his ultimate, and he just jumps from place to place. With two Seraphs is insane. One of my favorite builds is two Seraphs and RFC, so he doesn't waste time walking, and he's always ultimating. Like, always. Every single second he's ultimating, because he doesn't have to walk everywhere, anywhere. The problem is he's a glass cannon, and because of that, he can die to some random spells or random critical hits. Uh, so another possibility is building him 
more defensively, where he goes for an example Infinity Edge because he always crits with his ultimate, right? Which then adds the critical damage, but also just some uh, defensive items like Warmog, um, like Guardian Angel, and so on. Bloodthirst is also good on him because you guarantee yourself again only critical hits with the with his ultimate, so you can just deal so much damage uh, and heal for so much as well. Uh, remember also a tier three, sorry, a three star Kha'Zix teleports. He doesn't he doesn't jump. He teleports instantly because instead of 1k movement speed, he has 10k movement speed. So he's literally Son Goku. Next we have Kindred. Kindred has insane synergy with with Shadow. Uh, these are out of damage. Doesn't matter if she's a ranger because that's not something that you're looking for. First of all, she's a um, she's a, she's a Shadow character, so deals potentially insane damage in the as an opener because typically you would like to give her at least one Seraph. She only has 35 mana, so one Seraph fills more than half of her mana after an attack. So basically with two auto attacks, she casts an ultimate again and deals damage with her ult, which then takes a, makes a takes down and triggers and triggers um, her shadow again. Uh, she's also very good as a blade master. So in general, she's very similar to Kha'Zix because she also has mobility, but she's, she, she's shadow instead of assassin. Next we have Olaf, who is a Glacial Berserker, so keep in mind, he basically has a built-in item, uh, a built-in item that can be activated by having someone else who is a Glacial, most likely a Volibear. In general, he has built-in Lifesteal as well, and Rageblade too. So, ideal items for him would be a Rageblade, Bloodthirster, and whatever, or Rageblade, in a Hand of Justice, an example. Uh, and this way, he's almost unkillable when he triggers his ultimate. This is He's also unaffected by CC uh, when he's after the ultimate. So you can't do anything. This is why it's so important to stun him and poison him before he triggers the ultimate, because then he just dies. Another counter to Olaf is, of course, Morello. In general, Morello feels like a very playable item right now, uh, because he relies on healing. But he also deals insane amount of damage. And he, he can also apply on hits while having the Berserker buff. So you can, in example, do Disarm and uh, other on-hit items on him. Which then are triggered in a cone alongside Glacial. Uh, then we have Kiana. Kiana is in tier S because of her insane CC. She can hit with her ultimate. She can hit two creatures because it, it has a range of two hexes. And stands for three seconds. On level 2, so when she's a silver, she stuns for 3 seconds, which is insane because she starts at 50 mana out of 100, so the, the first ultimate goes really fast. Uh, and what is also important, important she's a tier 3, so it's kind of easier to 3-star that unit, and when she's a 3-star, she has a 5-second stun. Apart from that, she's a very good um, carry for mana items. So in general, she also has insane synergies because she applies uh, the synergy to the map you're playing on. So, so, so she's either Cloud, Mountain, Inferno, and uh, and Ocean. Ocean is probably the least playable uh, for her because with Inferno, you can pair that with Diane and then someone else. With Cloud, you can pair that with Yasuo or Janna for the Cloud bonus. With Mountain, you can pair that with Malphite or early uh, Talia for the mountain buff. So in my opinion, she's insanely playable. And one of the characters that I probably almost always play, even when I don't play Assassins. Um, until some point, at least. Master Yi is here because his insane, insane ability to fit into almost any comp. You know? He has Shadow, so he's great with Kindred. Uh, has Mystic, so it's great with Janna. Uh, and is a blade master, so you can fit that in almost everything because it's an easy uh, spatula item that you can build and give, in example, to Kindred a blade master, and they have a shadow blade master setup that is insanely powerful. Master Yi is also very powerful, of course, if you silver him, but the problem is, of course, you have to get a silver Yasuo. But in general, he feels insanely powerful, super fast attacks. He can benefit from, example, Static Shiv, uh, the same as Olaf. Because of the insane attack speed, Rage Blade, because it stacks so fast. He has built in healing 
And what is important, remember that his ultimate gets the aggro off him. That means that whenever he's being attacked and he gets his ultimate off, everyone stops attacking them and attack other people instead. That's the moment when he can recover and deal the damage that was needed. Malzahar is here uh, because it feels like he's overstated. He doesn't feel like a two, two gold unit. It's more like a three gold, uh, maybe maybe a little bit even up there to four gold. Maybe, probably not, but he feels definitely like a three gold unit. Uh, he spams so many creatures. He's applying Morello on him, so he's a good holder for Morello until you switch to Cinch, for example. Um, he has Shadow, so works well with Masi and Kindred, and in general just is a powerful summoner. Vlad is a very similar topic to Diane. He doesn't feel as powerful, but he's a tank. Don't think about him as a backliner. You can frontline him. He heals for an insane amount because the amount of damage that he deals with his ultimate, he heals at the same time. So if you go for AP items, basically they heal him for the every single AP that you buff them, buff it. So he heals for an insane amount of uh, for insane amount of heals, uh, for insane amount of heal health points, and is benefiting from uh, defensive items or AP bonuses. So bear that in mind when building items for him. And he's insanely powerful when free sword. And it's kind of relatively easy if no one else goes for him, of course. But that might not be the case because he's such a powerful creature and can be a part of almost every single build until mid game. Now, when it comes to tier A, those are really good units that are just playable. Cyan is a shadow, has insanely powerful ultimate that is, by the way, channeled. How I did get to know that today when he was glacial and countered my ultimate. So he's not, he's not like unstoppable, but he's still very playable. Overstated, a lot of armor, a lot of HP, uh, a lot of damage coming from him. And he, he deals a lot of damage with his ultimate as well. Yorick, a powerful summoner, nothing much to add, also light, so if you build a full light, he's also a, a crucial part of it. But at the same time, the summoners, remember that the summons that you get are AP based. So whenever the game goes into over, uh, overtime, all the summons are getting additional AP bonus and deal more damage. Lux is an A because I feel like she's inconsistent. If she would always hit multiple creatures, or reliably hit someone because many times she's gonna ult and the ult will go off when there's no one else in the hex anymore uh she would have been way higher but for because of the inconsistency i rate her as an a character because most of the time you're gonna most likely use her as a synergy creature uh for you know like uh six glacials four shadows or even five shadows and so on uh because of the fact that it's kind of hard to make her consistent unless you put mana generation items on her and she can ult like very often Annie is a fantastic tank also a great mage if you can go for six mages because then she gets double tibbers and gets you something that mages are lacking uh which is massive frontline and two tibbers is insane she's just very powerful the inferno doesn't matter much think about her as the tibber machine that's basically it Nothing else matters. If she gets killed before she gets the Tibbers off, she's worthless. If she can get the Tibbers off, or even two of them, that's insanely powerful. When it comes to B, those are the champions that are good fillers. Maybe sometimes carries. Well, uh, we're going to talk, uh, talk a little bit about it. So, Brand is a good character that can deal a lot of, a lot of damage, especially with crits. He has six bounces on silver, which can... You know, all of them can crit if you have a jeweled gauntlet on it. Benefits a lot from uh, rubber than death cap and mana generation items, which then can be transferred to someone else. But he can also hold items that are going in example on Olaf. So if you know that you can go for Olaf late game in example because you have good items for him, Brand can be a creature that can keep them for now. So an example, uh, Hand of Justice, Raid Blade. Then we have Janna. Janna is in B because she's a fantastic support, gets a lot of heal, massive CC, and she's a mystic, which pairs great with, well, with Masai. That's about it. Malphite feels a little bit underwhelming for a tier 4, but I feel like he would have been way too powerful for a tier 3. Um, but he has a powerful synergy. 
if Kiana, if you play on a mountain map, then Kiana and Malphite is a very good combo that I would like to use almost in every single composition because it's so easy to splash. And remember that in this patch, Force of Nature is very so is also very playable because of the all two off synergies that you can put in almost, almost every single comp. So Malphite is here because of the massive CC that he provides, which also takes a lot. I think it's a 2.5 second um, with the, with the stun which goes to up to 5 seconds if he is free starred which might be rela relatively easy if no one else is building him and you have a lot of good economy but in general don't try to do it like you know don't try to make it if you don't see that it, that the game just wants to give you like 6 malphites you know in general he's also very good with morale by the way and is great as a mage because he when you have 6 mages he goes like from one edge of the map to the second edge of the map and stuns the entire opposing team. Azir is a great carry early and mid game. Uh, benefits from attack speed. That means that he's, his summons are attacking as fast as he is attacking. So Rageblade is a great item for him. And remember, if you have Rageblade and Shojin, you summon more of his soldiers so then you attack faster and so on. Um, he's also Desert. And Desert is very playable, playable because of Kha'Zix. So if you go for 4 Desert, he's also pretty decent. But you want Kha'Zix to be your main carry. Uh, then we have Zed. Zed is a unit that without items is absolute garbage. Unless you, you have Lux, which is electric. Electric Lux makes Ord, which is trash, tier S. But that requires electric Lux, and that's not easy. In general, Zed... Benefits mostly from Garden Angel, Repeating Crossbow, <laughs> uh, Ionic Spark, and basically those are the three that I would have built the most, and Mana Generation, of course, because he can spawn a lot of his copies. Uh, but in general, unless you need electricity or you have perfect items for him, I really don't like playing Assassin as that. Unless he's a part of Six Assassin or something. But he, he is like... He's not a great har character. And definitely, uh, without items, he's subpar for a tier 5. So bear that in mind. Nami feels very similar to, to Zed. But without items, she can still be a reliable CC. Which is important. And she is, in my opinion... Um, very playable. If you can put mana generation items on her with Morello, because she she hits with the wave almost the entire entire map. And what is also very um, funny is that once I tried uh, Nami with double Seraphs and a Morello, so you put her into the edge of the map, she never walks, basically, because she starts the game with the ult off, it just goes instantly off, hits everyone with the Morello, and then she gets filled 40 mana, she gets another ult very fast, Another ult hits the entire army. Army. So if you want to make some fun of her, build two seraphs and morale on her. Uh, but two seraphs is also very playable on Kindred and on Kazix. So you know, might not be the best choice. Then we have Druid tier, and why Druid has a separate tier? My opinion about Druid was that they are trash late game and mid game, but a fantastic early game. But the more I play them, I actually the more I like them, and I feel like they can most of the time be um, still playable till late game, uh, especially if free starred and it's, if no one else is going for them, that should be rather easy. Also LeBlanc has a fantastic CC which deals a lot of damage, it's 375 damage typically on, uh, on silver, uh, which is insane. Insane, and she's an easy assassin also to play free assassins, then you can transfer something else for her. And, you know, uh, keep the items from her on Kha'Zix, an example. So if you play Diane, uh, Nocturne, and an example, LeBlanc, then LeBlanc can be then sold to transfer items to Kha'Zix, and so on. Uh, other than that, if you play them on its own, LeBlanc is the only playable character. Maybe Nico if you don't have Syndra, uh, but that's about it. Druid, if those creatures would be separate without the druid and the woodland uh, synergy that would have been very low on this list probably around f but because of the druid and woodland synergy they're pretty high up then we have tier c 
which is meh you know it's like whatever those champions can be okay can be bad yasuo is here first and foremost um for the cloud buff and of course for master yi synergy with blade masters that's about it probably you don't want to put items on him unless you want to sell him Tarik. hard to say if he if he is silver he becomes pretty strong if you can put one generation item uh one mana generation item on him uh, but in general i feel like he's very underwhelming specifically because ash is underwhelming here as well and she probably will get buffed and if she gets buffed then Tarek might be way more playable alongside Ash. Like, ba they basically move in pairs. I should have just put them actually here, like this. If Ash is good, Tarek is good. If Tarek is good, Ash is not great. But in general, it's like... It, it all depends on Ash. If Ash is your main carry because you have Deathblade and Rageblade on her, an example, then that can mandate playing Tarek. Uh, and in general, that might be kind of decent. Also remember, Crystal looks. If you get, if if you have Crystal looks, Ash carry and Tarik, well then they become kind of powerful. But that again, as an electricity requires a looks with with that synergy. Nocturne was nerfed, and he's not as powerful as before, but he's a good carry for items that can be later used on someone else. Uh, he's benefiting from items mostly that fit Olaf. So an example, Rage Blade. Um, Hand of Justice, everything that just gets the attack speed off because he has no mana, but every single third attack uh, heals him and makes like a whirlwind. So basically, that's it. Vagar is insane if you have him a free star and then he single handedly can carry your entire game, especially with six mages when you have guaranteed double cast. But in general, he's here to trigger Shadow. And that's about it. And in most cases, you don't even want to play Vagar because you play Malzahar, Kindred, Mystic, uh, Master Yi, and, um, and Cyan. So that's about it. Jax is good for triggering lights. And probably if you play Berserkers, if you don't play six Berserkers, then you don't play him at all. That's about it. But he's good. Also a good uh, early game carry for items. He is most likely bugged on level 3, I mean on 3 star, because he gets too much mana with Spear of the Shojin, and he, he can like almost permanently ult. And that's probably a bug um, that might be fixed in the future. So don't don't think about that, like, like he is such a powerful creature when you see a 3 star Jax killing everything. And we have Nautilius. I'm a little bit torn on, on Nautilius, because he might be actually pretty decent as a mage. With his permanent CC on, on, on a character. Mana generation on him is also pretty decent. Because he's super tanky. Um, but feels underwhelming. I don't know. He He's decent. But he's not great. That's about it. Not great, not bad. Then we have Seaver. Sivu would be a potential carry for almost every single team because of the easy Blade Master bonus, but she's made out of paper. Like, she's literally being killed by almost everything. And that makes her really bad. If you play for Desert, then your main carry is Kha'Zix, because he's not that easy to kill, because of his mobility. And Sivu is here on the trigger Desert, Desert for 4. You can maybe put a red buff on her. An example uh but in general like i feel like sevier is just very underwhelming and probably you don't want to use her uh unless early game and for like yasuo blade master synergy and that's it now when it comes to tier d renekton is like the old darius from set one but a little bit better but he is not he's not knight but in general feels like he's a playable berserker if restart he's actually pretty decent uh but it's a he's a playable early game transfer creature that's how you think about it now volibear is fantastic when you play olaf other than that not really so you probably don't want to play uh the volibear unless you play full electricity and full ex electricity i mean like full full electricity with uh with jaina because if you have jaina uh, sorry looks um looks electric electrical looks then every single electric eunuch 
unit like Zed, like Volibear, and like Orn, because insanely powerful, because they deal 500 damage AoE. And that means you can just play multiple Volibears, multiple Orns, and multiple Zeds just for that synergy. Uh, then we have Warwick, which is a Glacial. Six Glaciers are very powerful. That's probably the only reason to play it for now. And Predators are okay for early and mid game. And also another Predators build is probably just Predators into Poison because of Poison. Uh, so then don't feel about it like, you know, it's it's um, that Warwick is a good creature. He's okay, but he's probably a transfer creature just like Renekton. Uh, then we have Aatrox. Unfortunately, my favorite character is currently only playable because of Light. His, his ultimate didn't change. It still does a lot of damage. Uh, but uh, he's just like last, sir. Doesn't really fit. Fi uh, doesn't really fit anything right now, apart from light. He's a blade master, so if you go for blade masters, that's okay. But that's about it. Then we have Syndra. Syndra is um, a little bit like Lissandra from set one. If you give her a Morello, uh, she is pretty, pretty good for early game and mid game carry. But the problem is she is not as reliable as Syndra because her spell is random and might hit creatures that are super far away and will only heal, uh, hit one creature. She also doesn't get double mana like Lissandra because she was an elementalist and has smaller range. So she's like, okay, but lackluster. Uh, then we have Mr. Nasus, which is for light. That's about it. You can play him early game and that's it. Then we have E, which is Zyra. A very weak summoner that I feel like is not really that playable after the nerf uh, because she requires so much mana to trigger off her ult, uh, her ult. If you plan to play summoners, you probably want to play Zyra just to transfer the items later on someone else. Then we have Rek'Sai. Ugh. Again, Predator, the same case as Warwick. Actually, you know what? She should be here. She should be here in this tier. Um, if you make her assassin, she's playable because then Nocturne and her will be steel and assassins. But in general, she feels like she's okay-ish. She deals true damage with her ult, which can be playable uh, if you play if you play Predator. But it's not a creature that you want to play in in most of your comps. Uh, when it comes to Ezreal, he's very good early game, but falls off pretty hard very fast, and he might be a good carry for items for someone else like. Kindred later on, or Kha'Zix, because he benefits from the same items, because he has low mana and attack speed. Uh, but in general, you want to avoid playing him, unless you go for Glacials. Then we have Vayne, which is also playable because of Light. And the, un possible only, the only possible version of Vayne is if she's a 3-star, and you play full Light, and you have items on her. That's probably like the one playable carry Vayne. Other than that, she's just... Uh, a placeholder creature. Now, Braum, in the same spot as he was in set one. He's okay for Glacial. He's okay for potential Wardens or Guardians as in set one. But you don't want to play him alone. If he's a free star, you can make him defensive with four mil and so on. But in general, just he's just like, meh. Then we have Varus, which is okay, I guess, but way weaker than he was in set 1 because of the lack of demon and inferno is not as powerful and that's about it and then we have fresh i mean trash tier which is units that are basically like really bad and i would most likely assume that trash scanner gonna get a buff in the next patch because they're really bad like really 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 bad and you probably never want to play them until you really need them for a synergy uh but that's about it. Then we have Talia, which will play for Mountain, if possible, or for early free mages. That's about it. She's pretty terrible herself. Like weak stats and high mana and so on. Then we have Orn, which is only playable as a character if you play electricity. And that's about it. And then we have Soraka, which is only playable if you need her for 6 light. And most of the time if you play light, uh, you need... Spatula item, so then you don't even play Soraka most of the times. 
unless unless your lobby is full of mages and Soraka can help you with defeating those guys. But yeah. That's about it. We're going to record the next one like just like this one if 923 one, uh, patch 923 will change something. That's about it. Thank you very much for watching, you know, if you like this video, leave a sub, leave a comment, I'll reply. Bye-bye.